Uh, hi, hi, Jason. How how are you feeling out of the, the final tests? Hey, um, yeah, we're feeling pretty good. Um, yeah, the, the spirits in the dressing room are still very, very high. We still have a really good opportunity here to, to win this series. And, you know, everybody's up big for the occasion and we know what's at stake. If I can just ask, uh, as an away team, how difficult it is? How difficult is it with three back-to-back -back test matches, and what are the challenges that that poses, especially to your pace attack? Yeah, having the test matches you know, in a short turnaround, um, such as it has been, has been tough. Um, yeah, no doubt both teams will be feeling it. But look, look, we've got enough motivation to keep pushing. You know, we've got a chance to win this series. Uh, we've been playing some pretty decent cricket, so it's just a matter of <clears throat> um, just writing the wrongs that we had in the last game and, and just making sure that we, we hit the ground running and start this test match really well. Are you going to be looking at uh, bringing some changes or anything? Um, well, I just walked across the ground to get over here and, you know, it's covered down, so I haven't really seen the pitch again today. And I, again, I like to see the pitch up until the last moment to, to really make, make a, a definitive decision on, in terms of selection. So we'll have to wait up to tomorrow. Uh, sorry for not saying this before, guys, and sorry for um, causing you the tip, but we're going to take one question for journalists and see how quick we can get through a few questions. And if there's time left for repeaters, then we'll um, proceed in that manner. But thanks, Tim, and my apologies for that. Terry Garage, please proceed. Yes, good morning, uh, Jason. Um, it must be uh, very pleasing, though, to see the competitiveness uh, that we're showing and the fact that uh, we, we weren't that far away in the second test and we've still got a great chance of uh, creating history in England. Yeah, it's been really good to see what the guys have been producing. Again, I'm really proud of the guys so far in this tournament. You know, we've done really well. Um, and it's just a matter of just pushing it to the next level. We have done reasonably well as a test side in the last two to three years. And, you know, we're really slowly but surely getting, you know, our feet wet, wet in terms of what this team can produce. And I, I have full confidence in this team that this team can turn things around for West Indies cricket. So it's just a matter for us to stick together, you know, continue to learn and, and grasp as much information as you possibly could grasp in playing in different conditions around the world. Alan Gardner. Um, Hi, Jason. Hi, uh, yeah, <laughs> unmuted now. Um, there's been a, a bit of talk about the, the batting lineup, Jason, um, and whether Shea Hope is under a pressure, a bit of pressure after uh, a run of middling scores. Do, do you, uh, what, what's your sort of message to him, and do you have other options within the squad that you might be considering uh, looking at? Look, all our players have got my full backing. You know, they know how I personally feel. Um, yes, some of them haven't been getting the runs that they would like, but more or less it's just giving them us full support, you know, 100% behind Shea. We all know what Shea can produce. You know, he's done it before at this level at Test Cricket. He's arguably one of the best one-day batsmen in the world, and we know the caliber player he can be, you know. So I've got full confidence in Shea to get some runs. You know, he's gone and started so far in this series, so he's not far off from converting the start into something really special for us. So he's got my full support. Mark Lisa. Yes. Sorry about the delay, just unmuting myself. Have you made a decision about the bowlers as well? I mean, England have got the luxury of, um, of rotating. Um, Gabriel and Roach, are they, are they both fit? Are they both strong enough for a, yet another test in such a quick turnaround? As I said just now, I like to wait until the more I begin to see the wicket, to see what we're, what we're faced with. Um, in terms of the, the, the workloads and the, the management of our players, everybody's pulled up really well. Um, and again, we, we've been doing this for a number of years now. You know, um, the nucleus of our playing 11 hasn't really changed significantly. You know, these guys have backed up test matches before. Yes, the turnaround and this one has been a little shorter than normal, but these guys have done it before. So. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the workloads uh, when it comes to these players. We're married. Samuel. Hi, good morning, Jason. Um, is there any areas that you would like to improve on or tighten up heading into the last uh, match? 
Yeah, definitely I feel it. I didn't think I feel it when in the last game. Um, so that's definitely a, a cause for us to really lift it and, and, and put in a much better effort in the field. Um, that, that was just mainly the, the, the main issue that I had in the last game. I think we were pretty competitive on the other two fronts. Um, yes, we'd love our batters to come for a few more starts. We yet to get a hundred so far in this in this tour. So uh, again, it's a perfect opportunity for a batter to, to step up and get a hundred. Yeah, guys, I have some questions being typed to me privately, but I just want to um, restate that this is a match preview, so we want to ensure that the questions are focused on tomorrow's match and not necessarily too much of the past or general questions. David Brook, please proceed. Yes, hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, hello, Jason. Um, can I just ask, I know you can't talk about selection until you've seen the pitch, uh, but... Um, it, um, is it just the 15 that are under consideration, or do you see any circumstances when you might consider uh, calling up a reserve player? Just the 15 that we've selected. Unless Thank somebody you. becomes injured at the last moment and we have to replace them. Right. Okay. And now, please proceed. Hi, good morning, Jason and Mark Goodrich Boys from the Nation newspaper in Barbados. I hope you're well. Hey, good morning, buddy. I'm good. Good morning, yeah. Um, just put it into context for us, what exactly is key for, for us to get victory against England in this final test? What's the most crucial thing? Um, it's a combination of things, you know. You need 20 wickets to win a test match. And we need to get some, some solid, at least a solid first innings to, to set the game up well. You know, I think once we get these two things happening, more or less, you know, the game kind of goes in, in the direction you want it to go in. So we pay special attention to, particularly to, to starting well and putting some runs in the board in our first innings. And, you know, our board doesn't need to get 20 wickets. Thanks a lot, Jason, and all the best going forward. Thank you. Uh, Rick Hyman from Sportstar. Uh, hi, Jason. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you? Yeah, good morning. Uh, well, congratulations uh, on winning the first test and then it's 1-1 right now. But then looking at this series, I mean, you guys have set a great example by traveling to England and playing this series. So personally, how do you look at this series irrespective of the results, win or a loss, but then playing a test series amid a pandemic is a huge thing. So how do you personally look at this series, uh, uh, your assessment of the two tests and the one that's coming up? Yeah, it's, it's great to be back playing cricket. Um, I think it's massive for world cricket that, you know, uh, we, we get back into to uh, entertain the fans around the world. You know, it hasn't been easy. Um, so it hasn't been an easy decision to come over for some. Um, but yeah, we're here and we're, we're here and really enjoying our time here so far. So again, I, can't, I don't really get too caught up with the outside stuff. Um, <laughs> More or less, we've got a good opportunity here to win this series. And I strongly believe that we can, but we've got to produce the, the good things to do it. Alan Gardner, please proceed. Uh, thanks, Dario. Um, just um, on the possibility of Raheem Cornwall coming in, Jason, what um, can you just outline what he would offer to your side and where, how he might bounce things up if it is a sort of turning pitch? Um, yeah, if he does come in, he's a wicked taker and he's proven to be a match winner. You know, not only at the regional level, but his last, his only test match, he, sorry, his last test match he played, um, he got 13 wickets in it. So, yeah, I think he is a quality spinner. Uh, no doubt to me, he would be the best spinner on the show in this series. Um, so, yeah, he's always a wicked taking option for us, but not only a wicked taking option, he brings a, a bit more sit catching, batting as well to even bat. Uh, and then obviously brings a lot of control with his with his art. All right, guys, and that will be all the time that we have today um, for questions. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Um, obviously, we had an engagement that was reduced in time, as I said, due to some of the things that we have to get done prior to the start of the match tomorrow. Um, so I'd like to just thank this keeper for joining us, and thank you guys for the coverage we offered. And we're looking forward to see, seeing you tomorrow, not only. Um, watching the matches, watching the match for the next five days, but also in our closer play press conferences. Thanks again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.
Thank you. All right.